Happy 407 day, everybody. If you don't know the reference, I'll explain it here in a bit. We're going to talk about the state of Orlando Magic fandom. Talk a little bit about what to look forward to here in these final two games. And of course, tonight's game against the Charlotte Hornets. Happy Thursday. Happy 407 day. It's Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed locked on magic. Today is April 7th, 2022. My name is Philip Ross Reich. I'm the expert and site editor over at orlandomagicdaily.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter at Philip RR underscore OMD. On today's episode of Locked on Magic, we're going to celebrate 407 Day by talking a little bit about the state of magic fandom. It's been an interesting year to be a magic fan. Some interesting storylines that have occurred um, uh, involving magic fans. Uh, something worth discussing and something I've thought a lot about throughout the course of the season. We'll talk about that, what to expect here in these final two games, and of course, a preview of tonight's game against the Charlotte Hornets. But before we do that, we want to thank you for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, sorry, as I plug in my computer here, first thing in the morning, whether it is on your way to work, while you're working out, whenever, we truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day Every single day, remember the Locked On Podcast Network has great podcasts covering every team in the NBA, plus other sports teams. So check them out wherever you download podcasts. Search for Locked On and the team you are looking for. If you don't know, today is a fantastic, if not overcast day here in Central Florida. It is 4.07 day, April 7th. Uh, 4.07 for those who do not live in Central Florida is our area code. Um, And so today is a fun internet day to celebrate all things Orlando. And I have been a lifelong Orlando resident. I've lived in this city uh, since I was born. I've been going to Magic Games since I was born, literally since I was born almost. Um, My my parents do have pictures of me as a baby at the first practice um, that the Magic Magic had held, or at least one of the very early practices. Uh, I have been following this team. I like to joke that I probably know as much about this team as anyone outside of the Magic organization, um, because I've just I've followed them my entire life, um, and, and I've really been excited and happy to watch this team, this this team, and, and this city grow. Obviously, Orlando is Orlando is an exciting place. Um, let's just let's just say that first and foremost. Orlando is an exciting place. It is a young city. I, I joke all the time. Now, whenever we get big things, whenever we get like the U.S. soccer playing here or whether we have multiple events going on at the same time, you know, it's almost like we're a real city. Um, but Orlando really is becoming that. Um, this is a this is a city that is growing in its identity and and, and really starting to make its own mark. And, and I've been thinking a lot about this, um, how, frankly, just detrimental this extended period of rebuilding has been. Um Ever since Dwight Howard, I mean, I think I think Orlando is really starting to come into its own. Um, I, you know, say what you want about uh, uh, local funding or government funding of sports stadiums, and there's a lot to say about it, and a lot of really good arguments about why it's a bad idea. And Orlando City, frankly, proved why it's you know not an investment that cities have to make. It's it's you know there's no reason to be held ransom. But I will say the that the city for me really turned. Uh, and maybe it's a maybe this was a product of it rather than a rather than a, a catalyst of it. Um, things really turned when the magic when Orlando was able to build the Amway Center, where the Magic built the Amway Center, um, and, and really you know started to kind of give this place a, a place of its own, a place a, a, a gathering place to be proud of. Um, the Dr. Phillips Performing Arts Center also absolutely a, a critical critical addition to the cityscape as well. Um, I, I I frankly. I cannot imagine what this city would have been like without Dr. Phillips Performing Arts Center. Um, it was a collective place to grieve following the Pulse nightclub murder, uh, nightclub shooting. Um, it, it, it was so necessary during the pandemic. It was necessary to have that outdoor gathering space so people could come together. Um, and and I uh, frankly that 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 was that, that was always needed. The city needed to update the Bob Carr Performing Arts Center. Um, as as much as that place is, is a good place to watch a show, um, it maybe isn't. But 
Um, but they needed, we needed that local gathering place, that, that public gathering place. And of course, things have only taken off since then uh, with Orlando City becoming a phenomenon in the town and, and really giving, the, giving this, this city something that really feels fresh and new. There's a lot of young energy in this city too. Um, and that, a lot of that thanks to UCF as, as they've grown in their athletics and as they've grown as a university as a, 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 with their public profile. There are more people staying in Orlando now too. It's not just a transplant city. It's a city where people grow up. And, and that's where we leave the magic. Um, you know, it, it's, it's been a storyline throughout the season. And it's a frustrating one for me because I always hate it when, when people come into our building and, and act rude. Um, but you got to shut them up too. Uh, and it's been a storyline that even the players are aware of and the players have interacted with about how the Magic have not always had the Amway Center. They have only 11 home wins this season. That will tie the franchise low for the fewest wins at home in a season. Um, they've been outnumbered at home by the Miami Heat. Um, they've had MVP chance rained on Joel Embiid uh, and the, when the Philadelphia 76ers came to town um, in December. They've had... Fans cheering for Kyrie Irving as he went for 60 points, which uh, some part of me thinks that's more of a respect thing. You, you, you're never, you very rarely see 60 point games. I think, I think to a certain extent, that was just a respect for the performance as much as, as much as uh, people cheering for the Nets. But Bulls fans invaded, Knicks fans invaded. Uh, I think I heard that there was another team that that uh, another kind of surprising team that kind of invaded a, a little bit as well. It, it it hasn't felt like home. I will say this, though. Uh, there have been lots of games this year, too, where the Magic crowd really came through for this team. They went over the Jazz. Orlando fans were loud. Um, you know, Fans were shouting Sixers fans down during the second meeting back in March, with which the Magic lost in overtime. Um, there have been times when you can feel the energy of the crowd. Um, even Tuesday's win over Cleveland. You could feel the energy of the crowd. You could feel... This, this fan base wanting to get behind him. And, and I've told a bunch of people, like, look, I could feel it even during the first rebuild, during the Rob Hennigan years. You could feel the city wants to get behind the Magic. They want to believe in this team. And, and you saw that, again, in 2019, when the Magic made their playoff run. The crowd was a big part of that. But there's now so many things to do in Orlando. And yes, not everyone has the Magic as their first team. There are a lot of people from New York, from Boston, from... Chicago, from from all over this country who end up here. We are very much a transplanted city still. And the Magic lost a decade to build fans. I like to say the Magic lost a generation of fans for not getting their rebuild right. Um, and, and I think that was a risk that no one maybe fully considered um, during the, during the post-Dwight years. Um, that the Magic, at a time when Orlando was really growing and coming into its own, would lose so much of the fandom, would lose so much, would lose a chance to really cement fans and build the generational fans that allow Knicks fans to be Knicks fans even when they've stunk for a decade, or allow Sixers fans to be Sixers fans, or or, or whatever. Those are legacy franchises. They've been around for seventy five years. The Knicks have been around in the NBA for seventy five years. Philadelphia Seventy Sixers. I forget when they moved. I mean, the Philadelphia Warriors existed 75 years ago they, before they moved to San Francisco, and then Syracuse, the Syracuse Nationals moved down to Philadelphia. It, these, these fans have been basketball fans and fans of the same team for generations. Orlando does not have that. They're still building that. And it's not like Orlando City where no one has an MLS team ahead of them. The Magic have to earn, the, earn fans' respect and earn fans' trust and attention. But it's there. Fans want to cheer for this team. And I've seen as this season's gone on, as people have started to watch this team more and understand and, and understand what's being built here, I've watched fans really buy into this team. You could feel it a little bit in the Amway Center. You could feel it at, during these home games, how much the fans want to cheer for this team and want to believe in this team. But as always, you're not winning these fans. You're not winning back that support. You're not winning back the Amway Center until you win. Until you win, until you get, until you draw people in with wins. And that's ultimately what's going to matter. Put an entertaining product on the court. You've got great guys that everybody loves, um, that everyone wants to buy into. Win some basketball games and the Amway Center is going to be a fortress again. Um, I truly believe that. Uh, and yes, there are still, even when the Magic are good, and it happened in 09, it happened in 10 to some degree. 
Celtics fans still came into the Amway Center. Heat fans still came into the Amway Center. That's just the reality of being in Orlando. We're, we're a bigger market than we get credit for, but we're still a young city. And so the most important thing for the Magic to do now, and, and this is something they cannot fail at, because it, it, you know, to some degree, if this rebuild fails, they may never get the kind of crowd support that they really need. And then this franchise becomes, gets really in danger. Um, you know, the, the, the interregnum years, the T-Mac years, fans weren't engaged. They were a little alienated by losing Penny and Shaq. They're a little, they're certainly alienated by the magic threatening to leave. And then again, when they tried to get the state, when they tried to get the stadium, people weren't ready for that. Um, even though it was desperately needed at the time. Um, this, this franchise has a chance to rebuild that fan base and rebuild themselves up again. But it's going to take, first and foremost, winning on the court. This franchise gets some criticism from fans for catering to tourists, um, for creating kind of a, a lighter atmosphere at the end. Sorry, I had internet issues again. It seems like that's a daily occurrence. But um, the Amway Center isn't the Orlando Arena in terms of crowd noise or proximity to the court. That's 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 not going to happen. They built a modern stadium. Modern stadiums aren't built the way that old stadiums were built. It's, it's, that's fine. But if the Magic want to create a better atmosphere, the first thing they have to do is win. Magic have made the playoffs just twice. Since move since or since three three times, but once was in the bubble. Um, the Magic have only played two sets, four playoff games at the Amway Center. You want to know why Magic why Magic games aren't crazy or crazed? It's because the Magic haven't been winning, and that's really the number one task for this team now. Is figure out a way to start winning again. We'll talk a little bit about what to expect for the rest of the season. Plus, get a, take a look at tonight's game against the Charlotte Hornets coming up here in just a moment. But first, betonline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all of the latest sports developments, including this week's Masters Championship odds, podcasts, and reviews for all the different leagues this season. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. We want to thank you for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. For your next lesson, check out the Locked On Now podcast. Nightly recaps of every NBA game with analysis from our local experts. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. So, the Orlando Magic have just two games remaining this season. Um... Lottery odds are, or the odds are set. The position is not. Um, I'll do my lottery explainer a little bit later. People are always kind of surprised when they actually learn the actual process of getting the lottery. But the the, the, the set of combinations the Magic ha- are going to get are, are the only thing that is not set quite yet. Um, the Magic, let me check my standings here real fast. The Magic are locked into one of the worst, one of the worst three records in the league. So they will have at least a 50. They will have at least a 14, they'll have a 14% chance of landing the top pick and a 52.1% chance of landing in the top four. They will have 140 number combinations in the lottery. The only thing left to decide now is what spot the Magic are at. With one more loss or one more Detroit win, the Magic will guarantee themselves one of the two worst records in the league. They are one game behind the Houston Rockets. The Rockets with 20 wins, Orlando with 21 wins. And so the Magic will need the Rockets to get one more win to have a chance at getting the top or at getting the worst record in the league. As everyone will point out, having the worst record in the league is pretty important in that it guarantees that you can't drop lower than fifth. Having a second worst record in the league means you can't drop lower than sixth in the NBA draft. So that's kind of where the Magic are at in the standings. They will play the Charlotte Hornets tonight. Um, we'll talk more about that game coming up in a second. Um, and the Miami Heat on Sunday, looking at the standings and whether those games will matter for them, the Charlotte Hornets are locked into a play-in spot. They're a game and a half behind the Atlanta Hawks for ninth. 
But that's important too because the ninth place team gets a home play-in game. Uh, the way the play-in tournament works, of course, is seven plays eight. The winner faces the two seed. Nine plays ten. The winner faces the loser of the seven-eight game. And the winner of that game is the eighth seed in the playoffs. So the Charlotte Hornets, it's it, the Charlotte Hornets appear like they're going to be going for tonight's game. Gordon Hayward, I believe, is expected back um, from uh, has been has been playing a little bit. They're trying to get him back in gear as much as they can before they get to the play-in tournament. They'll likely play the Atlanta Hawks in the play-in tournament. Um, uh, the Miami Heat, on the other hand, they've pretty much wrapped up the top, the first seed in the Eastern Conference. Um, the Miami Heat here. Uh, and actually, I'm looking at the injury report right now. Gordon Hayward is doubtful for tonight's game, so um, not likely he will play. I, I, it's not clear if he will play, but we'll see. How, we'll see how much the Charlotte Hornets put into that game. The, um, the Miami Heat have a two-game lead over the Boston Celtics, so one more win or one more Celtics loss, and they will clinch the top seed in the Eastern Conference. It feels very, very likely that Miami is not going to play all of their best players uh, on Sunday. Uh, I would not expect. Um, I would I would not expect uh, Jimmy Butler or Kyle Lowry or even Bam Adebayo to play on Sunday. So it's gonna get weird here in these last few games. Um, as as I've advocated throughout the course of the season, the focus right now should be on your players. Do what's best for your players. Do what's best for their development. Get the most out of the group you have. You, you, at the end of the day, you can't control these lottery odds. The Magic have done a good job. They've set themselves up well for the lottery. Um, they're, they're in a good position. Uh, it may not be the best position, uh, but this team it has done well to set itself up for a good chance to get a top pick in this year's draft. Um, that's all you can ask for. The rest of it is just random. It's coin flip the rest of the way now. Uh, it's, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's still important to me that the Magic makes sure these games are productive. So I was surprised and personally really excited that the Magic did bring Jalen Suggs back. And Jalen Suggs is off the injury report, so he appears clear for tonight's game. Cole Anthony has been ruled out already. Uh, Franz Wagner has been ruled out already. Wendell Carter, of course, also out as well. So we'll get to see Markel Fultz and Jalen Suggs play again today. And that stuff's really exciting. Now, as I noted yesterday, they had played only, I think it was seven minutes together, entering, or it's like seven or, it's like less than five minutes or something, together entering Tuesday's game. They played like 14, 15 minutes together on on Tuesday and, and it was really exciting to see that happen and they both said we're still learning how to play off each other and if there's one thing the Magic can learn and, and get out of the rest of the season it's that Jalen Suggs might still be on a minute restriction every one of those minutes should be with Markel Fultz get those two used to playing together get those two used to playing together in live action make the most of this time squeeze every little bit out of this time that's going to make this productive again that's the biggest thing that I've always said Make these games productive. I don't care if the Magic win or lose. You know, it's it's anybody's guess what's going to happen. But make these minutes productive. Make these minutes matter. Make these minutes have meaning. Make them make them help the team moving forward. Now, obviously, the way the Magic are handling the fourth quarter, and I have reached the acceptance stage of this, the way the Magic are handling the fourth quarter is, frankly, designed not necessarily to lose, but they aren't playing... Jalen Suggs and Markel Fultz. They're not, they're not saving Markel Fultz for the fourth quarter. They don't care about the result enough to do that. They're not saving Jalen Suggs for the fourth quarter on his minute restriction. They're going to play RJ Hampton. They're going to play Ignas Brasdakis. They're going to play, um, you know, Robin Lopez, perhaps, or Mo Wagner. They're going to play their guys at the end of the bench at the end of these games, whether they're close or not. The store does not matter. So, again, a lot of people complained about, still complained about the game against the Wizards back in, I think it was what, 2017? Um, a lot of people still complained about that last game when the Magic needed a loss to go into a tie with the Mavericks and Hawks for the third worst record in the league. Uh, and then the Magic ended up accidentally winning that game. And I go around and I say, look at who they played. Look at the minute distribution in that game. Look who played at the end of that game. The Magic were trying to lose that game, just like they were trying to lose Tuesday's game with the lineup that they had out there. No offense to the guys that were out there. They played hard. They did exactly what they're supposed to do. They got jobs to audition for. They got roles to audition for. They're not going to go quietly into the night. If the game is close, those guys are going to play hard, and you cannot blame those guys for playing hard. That is their job to play hard. Um, but uh, the Magic are – they're not going to play their starters late in the game. They're not going to set themselves up necessarily to win. Um, they've got other goals in mind. Um, but that's what I would expect – 
from the Magic for for, the, for these final two games is you know a, a chance to limit guys' minutes to take a look at different combinations um, and focus more on that rather than on the results of the game. Again, the fourth quarter just isn't going to matter right now, and we'll have to figure out how we handle these stats and deal with these moving forward. Would it surprise me if the Magic win one of these games? No, absolutely not. I, I think it's very possible the Magic will win one of these games to close the season. I do think Houston will end up with the worst record in the league. I think Orlando will end up second, and then we'll see where the chips fall on May 17th when the NBA draft lottery takes place. We'll talk a little bit more specifically about what to expect in tonight's game against the Charlotte Hornets coming up here in just a moment as I pause to uh, put the ad insert in for the audio podcast. So the Orlando Magic taking on the Charlotte Hornets tonight, like I said, it's not not going to be a game that you look to the score. The score is not going to matter in this one. Um, it's it's frankly not even clear if she's going to be trying particularly hard to win this game. Uh, you know, do they have an outside shot still at catching Atlanta? Uh, sure, um, sure. Uh, it, it's going to be tough, but um, certainly something they could do, and maybe and certainly something that they will probably chase after here. Um, so I think this could be a game where. Again, it's a it's a battle of motivation, but Cleveland was plenty plenty motivated to beat Orlando on Tuesday, and they got smoked. And you know, some of that I think is because Orlando felt embarrassed by how they played against New York. They played with a ton more energy and a ton more um, excitement, uh, and that's that's what the Magic want to see. Um, Charlotte uh, Charlotte obviously is is a really interesting team. They're ninth in the league in offensive rating at one hundred thirteen point one points per one hundred possessions. Uh, 54% effective field goal percentage, a really strong offensive team, but they will give up points, giving up 113.3 points per 100 possessions, one of the worst defensive teams in the league. They're 24th in the league in defensive rating. Uh, Magic's still sitting at 19th. They just can't score enough. Um, LaMelo Ball is obviously an incredible talent uh, and a guy that Magic have to watch. He really went wild on them in their last meeting in Charlotte, but Orlando was able to win that game, and that was because Jalen Suggs came back and had a really nice game. That was because this team really played uh, e- exceptionally well, one of the better games of the season. Um, it's it's going to be a fight. It's going to be a difficult matchup for sure. I, I, I can't predict what Orlando is going to do or what Orlando is going to look like uh, on a night-to-night basis right now because so much is up in the air. So much is uncertain. So much is, is, uh, is unclear at the moment. Um, but this is... But this is this is really a, a big statement and a big uh, a, 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 a big chance to learn and grow. Um, getting Markel and, and Jalen together, that stuff's really important. Those minutes are really really important, and so there's still a lot of value to be gained from these games. And obviously, like I said, fourth quarter isn't going to matter. The Magic are probably not going to play their best players more than 30 minutes. Um, they're certainly not going to be playing the end of the fourth quarter. So we'll we'll see how everything shakes out here uh, in Charlotte. Tip off tonight at seven o'clock. The Orlando Magic taking on the Charlotte Hornets in their final road game of the season. That's going to do it for me, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. Subscribe to the podcast, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, Himalaya, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all the fun places to download podcasts to your podcast-enabled listening device. You can find you can, for the latest on the Orlando Magic. I'm still I'm changing my copy there. Um, for the latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to follow or check out orlandomagicdaily.com. You can follow us there on Twitter at omagicdaily. Now that you're done listening to us, make your second listen Locked On NBA. Locked On experts covering the biggest stories around the NBA every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. That's going to do it for me today, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. For Orlando Magic Daily and Locked On Magic, it's been Philip Rossman-Reich. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic.